Now, let me tell you, as a new player, there are some characters that are going to carry your ass through the game, okay? And you even, if, especially if you're not a, if you're not a spender, you're free to play, you want this character now, right? Because they're broken and you want to get them as soon as possible. And which characters are there? I'm going to tell you. And which characters are worth building as a new player? I'm going to tell you. Calm down. So first of all, let's go ahead and talk about Vala really quick, okay? So Vala is, used to be, now she's not anymore. So if you're watching this now, on the time of release, she's not in the game and she's not in the special banner anymore. anymore. She's in the normal banner. Now you can wishlist her and she should be in the wishlist. In my opinion, That's, this is not a wishlist video. I'm not just saying like which character are worth building as a new player. Now, Vala is worth building, sure, but not as soon as possible because you uh, early on you're going to need a, a certain amount of characters such certain types of roles like a healer a tank a damage dealer some support right so vala is good and all but she skyrockets whenever you get her to mythic plus and how are you going to get her with to mythic plus whenever actually let's do this whenever you get her randomly from the wish list so if you're not spending if you are spending then she's like this is like this is a free to play uh tier list it's not a spender tier list what to show what to what you should um invest on uh, if you're spending you're spamming characters nobody cares okay if you're spending just just get every character and now what i want to tell you now is uh, the big boys that are going to carry you immensely okay so first of all let's start with brutus brutus is build as soon as possible try to fall to, to get him if you get him you win early on well what brutus does is he becomes immortal whenever he goes to low hp and while it's low hp uh, if you happen to also do the ult he spins around and gets back some hp so Right, so he's going to uh, mitigate a lot of damage. You can throw him as a mono tank if you want to mono tank, and that way he will he will buy you time for you to either heal him back or once he dies, he bought you enough time for the, all the DPSs to have their ult, and then you unleash doom on your enemy. So build as soon as possible if you have him. Right, another build as soon as possible is. Audi, where is Audi? Audi is a build as soon as possible. What Audi does, whenever he gets to Mythic Plus, you want to rush Audi to Mythic Plus, okay? So, Audi is going to be an insane unit. The moment he reaches Mythic Plus, it's going to change your game from normal game to, okay, I won, okay? The moment he gets to Mythic Plus, he gets insta-kill that... It, he has an insta kill threshold when he uses when he uses Eel's ultimate. He's gonna throw the, the snake on the enemy and he's going to set a threshold. This threshold increases over time, stacking off uh, the amount of uh, poison that the enemy has. The more poison it has, the higher the threshold kill goes until the HP goes below the threshold and they get insta killed. It doesn't matter who they are. You can even insta kill some bosses in the Dream Realm early on because at the end you will get infinite HP Dream bosses and Audi loses a lot of time, a lot, a lot of value there. But on your way to the mid to end game, you are going to uh, love Audi for the Dream bosses and Audi Mythic Plus. You will uh, use him for the ultra end game to for the 1000 plus uh trial of abyss everything you can go there everything that can die it can be killed will be killed by audi now another character that a lot of people are sleeping on are well not sleeping anymore but they were they were sleeping on coco for a very very long time now i'm going to do build after because i think that that coco is good and all but as a new player uh, you should build after Coco right after you build the core characters. And in my opinion, the core characters are Thoran and Cecia, that we are getting up there as soon as possible. Now, why are they there? Now, if you're running Brutus only, you will uh, encounter certain, um, certain battles where you just don't have enough time and Brutus gets like immediately popped and he dies. Now, if you want to run, if you want to run double tank or you happen to never get Brutus from your wish list, because it happens, it happened to me for Cecia, uh, 
but you do get Thoran, and now you can get Thoran. Thoran uh, is going to feel squishy at first, but you need to remember that he can, he can die once. He dies once, he resurrects himself. The more you level him up, the more he's going to be uh, resurrected. So uh, the good thing is going to be uh, getting Thoran to Mythic Plus and Cessia to Mythic Plus. Even if you don't have him to Mythic Plus, uh, they're still going to be good, especially Cessia. But Thoran is going to start shining a lot more whenever you get him to Mythic Plus. And now we can forge a pact with whoever is behind him. And you can put like a Vala there, you can put like a strong DP. What you want to do is build a very, very strong DPS and put him behind him. Be it Vala, be it Merrily, something like that, right? And now... It could also be Cessia. And now he's not going to die as much because he, he gets healed by a little bit of the damage that the damage that was that the damage dealer behind him connected with the path is dealing. Okay. So it's going to be even more tankier. And that's really good. He's also with the highest level higher level. He's going to also leech some life from the enemies. It's going to help a lot. And whenever he dies and he resurrects, he's going to have more life than when he resurrects a low level. Now Cessia is extremely strong. We are trying to get Cessia. Um, you, you you will try you need to try to get Cezia to Mythic Plus or Supreme Supreme Plus as soon as possible because she's extremely powerful and his um, her uh, Mr. Kyle which is the golem that she spawns not only is going to siphon um, stats to Cezia and to him but it's also going to do a lot of AoE damage it's going to tick down with percentage HP it's going to deal a lot of uh, physical damage with his lashes when he dies if Cezia has the um, ult up it's going to immediately get revived and if he was about to die and you do the ult again he gets healed to full immediately so these four characters are going to boost your account extremely strong strongly okay Boost your account strongly. Now, uh, let's move, unless we find something that is like really important. Yeah, so for the healers, okay? For the healers, now, there are a couple of healers that are very important to level up. I would say, it depends how much, like how you want to play. If you want to focus on uh, dealing, dealing a little bit of a buff, on top of healing, now you go for sm a Smokey. If you want to do raw healing, now you go for healing. Now, those two are should still be built as soon as possible. So I'm gonna get get them here. But these two are just a flavor. If you which one you like the most is going to be the one getting leveled up first. And for leveled up, I am talking about Mythic Plus. Uh, build. Build for build, we, we're talking about Mythic Plus. And so Smokey, what is going to do is going to have a when he does the third ult, is going to increase his range by a lot, almost full full arena. So you want to put him as 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 further as possible on the front line as as possible without getting aggroed. So that way, whenever he does the AOE, is going to take everybody uh, inside of it. Okay, including the enemies, because at Mythic Plus he gets a damaging AOE uh, that reduces a certain percentage of the HP, so it scales a lot, and he also deals a lot of damage to the bosses as well. And on top of increasing haste and attack speed, so you want him uh, to be. Uh, as high as high as possible for your account as soon as possible that's the offensive part of the healing for the defensive the defensive part of the healing going for he win is a crazy good option because especially a mythic plus she not only has the highest row healing in the game from the halt she's also going to uh, start applying mitigation which i believe is 30 percent to the whole stage whenever she does the ult so not only you get a lot of ult you also get a lot of um row healing you also get a lot of uh, damage mitigation which is like a a, a little cocoa effect on Hewin. So you want them to be Mythic Plus as soon as possible if you have the chance to focus them, okay? Now, moving on to other characters that are extremely strong, but at the same time is not like a build as soon as possible type of situation. Uh, as we're talking about Coco, Coco is extremely good. Let's talk about it right now. Coco is extremely good because of the damage mitigation. She heals a little bit, you can sometimes, if you have Coco Mythic Plus, you're probably going to be able to uh, not use any healer if you want to maximize some uh, stages damage. For example, you're fighting a, um, a Dreamland boss, or you're fighting PvP in a certain way, or you are fighting a guild boss. You want to do as much damage as possible in the least amount of time as possible, such as like or even like the, the world bosses, okay? 
Coco is going to be extremely good because she a mythic plus. She's going to give her shield and whatever whatever damage is being stored is going to be given to everybody else. So she, the, the shield is going to be spread um, among all of your ally and the damage mitigation is going to skyrocket from just her and a little bit during the ult to that plus a shield now the moment the, the higher you get her special weapon the higher the shield percentage is going to be and it's going to be chunkier and chunkier okay uh, same applies with other characters especially odi by the way you want to get get him to uh level 10 weapon a special weapon as soon as possible because that way it starts with higher energy i believe it starts with 600 energy which means it's going to give a, it was going to start uh targeting people and like executing people or setting them up for execution way much earlier okay on top of that if, if they die thanks to the poison uh, um, the, the poison kill he's going to get back almost all of his energy and it's going to start spamming this execution to everybody okay so that's really important to keep in mind now the other characters that i put here for example rowan is really good but i would stop a mythic plus if not even lower just build eventually they're here because they're not needed especially rowan right like Vala is here because you don't you, you don't really have a way to level it up. If you could get it to Mythic Plus, it's built after, right? Otherwise, if you don't like her or if you're trying to go for Flora Bell, for example, then you don't uh, you, you build them you build her eventually. Whenever you get it to Mythic Plus or whenever you need a rogue character in your team, okay? But Rowan does his job without having to be mythic plus mythic plus is going to help but it, me my, myself on my main account i still don't have rowan i um, mythic plus because it's, what's going to do is going to give you one extra potion it's fine right one extra potion is some other like mid, mid buff you don't really need anything besides the, on, the only thing that's going to help rowan is just getting him to a higher rank just because that way he doesn't die as easily Right, because like if it's like mythic and you're fighting a, a boss that it's suited for supreme or supreme plus, it's going to be one shot really, really easily. And you're gonna you're gonna lose him way earlier, and he's not gonna be able to do his job. That's the only reason why you would build Rowan eventually, because the third portion is fine and all. Uh, it gives also some more energy, but it, it's not that big deal. Okay. Now the other characters, these characters are very situational, uh, and I wouldn't really build them at all. Maybe you could build. This girl, I even forgot the name, what this girl is, because she's the only currently available Lightborn hero that hails. So maybe you could level them up a little, level her up a little bit, but there, there is so, only so many places in the, in the, in the wish list that you can do, right? So another good, good, good tanks, good tanks. Let's go back to the tanks. Antander is an extremely good tank. Uh, build as soon as possible if you're missing the others, right? This, this is how it works. If you're missing one of these characters, you have other options, okay? So, but Antandras is really, really good. You could even either build after if you're focusing on one of these two, or build as soon as possible if that's what the game gave you immediately. Uh, she's extremely strong. Uh, she's very, very tanky. She does the, the shield, taunts everybody, and then retaliates with a damage and absorbs the energy, energy the, the, the HP of the damage that she just dealt in an AoE. Well, after everybody is close to her because she taunts right so taunting is uh, really important don't don't underestimate it too much now uh let's see what else uh, other characters uh i do okay the granny granny is actually pretty good but i would say build after okay because if you have one or two of these tanks here you are chilling if you don't have anybody but you happen to get granny then sure but otherwise, those are have top priority. Now, Granny becomes a little bit stronger on Mythic Plus because on Mythic Plus, she beca she uh, gets a trigger that gives her a lot of HP back when she gets low lower than 50% of HP. On top of that, she gets a shield and her ult is able to root people in place, which most of the time is going to work and stop everybody, the enemy, from doing anything, which is going to give buy you enough time boom to kill them right to just that enough time to kill them so i went from from using myself thoran and antandra until i got granny mythic plus and then i switched to uh, granny to antandra um, instead of antandra and now i'm running thoran and granny if i need to double tank okay so but if you don't have if don't have her it's a side project that you can do okay next up 
I would say Corin and Merrily. Corin and Merrily are build after. Why why do I say this? Uh, so Merrily could technically be uh, actually I'm going to put uh, Merrily on build as soon as possible because if you are interested in getting a head start on a dream realm boss now, you need Merrily to be Mythic Plus as soon as possible and her weapon to be as high as possible. Because what Merrily is going to do is going to go Super Saiyan, ascend the Mortal Realm, and whenever uh, six people do six ults on your team, including yourself, she is going to enhance their bow. And now from that point on, she get true damage on her main attacks so now you're going to have a lot of attack speed a lot of haste uh, including if you in, uh, considering that you might be able to also um you might be having a situation where you're also using smoky and boost them boost her even more she's going to now have a super high attack speed spamming uh true damage on the bosses now she is a uh, dream boss annihilator She's going to destroy and burn down those dream bosses like it's no big deal. And you're going to notice a lot of help is going to come from her the moment she triggers her um, true damage. So you want to cater towards that if you are interested in that. It's a kind of a situational at the same time of build as soon as possible. Because it becomes top priority if you are interested in getting a lot of uh, uh, dream realm um, progress. Okay, Because dream realm is going to be very important early on to get your gear up. To get ahead of everybody else if you are able to get some certain threshold of HP. Moving on. Uh, now we have P PvP situational character. For example, Aeron is extremely good but it's a build eventually. Uh, our situational it depends what you want to do in the game Aeron is really really good it's extremely good but just for pvp it could be used in pve as well for the you know for the aoe um pull in but it's not that big of a deal in pve especially mid to end game so most of people most people only use him for pvp so that's where it, that's where it goes build eventually okay another one is a uh, byron now byron i feel like byron could be a build after but personally personally for me this is a build eventually because this could help you probably in the wilder tower besides that you're not going to use him too much unless the game decides to give you a lot of it but if if it does it means you have it in your wish list so if you like the character sure uh, what he gets a bit plus it gets like uh, it sacrifices its falcon to deny death once besides that it's just higher damage on the falcon higher higher synergy on what it does like on the falcon uh higher like energy regeneration so it doesn't lose the falcon abilities uh so it's a build eventually character i'm not gonna spend too much time on this guy okay now lila lila is a bait is she's she's good and all she early on is probably going to be good but i don't really want to tell you to build her to be honest a lot of people are probably going to tell you oh but she's a good character in my opinion she is good but not for long so what's the point in building her if she's going to fall off tremendously later on and we're talking about like 300 plus afk battle afk stage you're not using it anymore because if you need attack speed you use maki uh, if you're going for the wilder perspective you have other characters that are be best suited for clearing than just having her to mythic plus so personally i don't mm, want i don't want to tell you to build her so i'm gonna put it in now uh feel free to disagree in the comments but that's what i feel like okay now damien damien is a kind of a slept on character i would probably b put him in build eventually because this is a character that you kind of want to have uh, he's not targetable for the the entire fight it just spawns a little a little carriage that goes around and heals heals people now his burst healing is really really high so it's really good uh but it's uh, it's not a character that unless you really like him or you want to start early it's going to also be good in pvp i feel like i haven't i haven't tried him yet i'm still building him it's uh i think it's just legendary so he has big healing and he cannot be targeted so you can chill you know that you're never going to lose Damien. It's going to... Now, your your enemy are going to be able to destroy your, your carriage. But if that happens, it means that either you got unlucky with the AI uh, targeting, like it happened, or uh, you're getting destroyed. And if you're getting destroyed, there's no point in uh, blaming Damien, okay? so But that's a good healer, but it's kind of situational, so build eventually, okay? Now, we're going for... 
uh, Arden here. Arden is a, a situational build, in my opinion, or a build eventually. I want to put it in situational because it depends what you're trying to do. It's very focused on CC, especially Mythic Plus, which makes when he does the ult, does the, the, the Dark Cloud, is also going to root character, which is going to help. In conjunction with Granny, you're going to be able to make a wilder, huge CC. You can do like Granny, Arden, um, Damien, and Aaron, and you're going like to CC everybody. I mean, Damien is just here to 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 heal, but the others are going to CC everybody, uh, root them, move them, uh, get them close together. So it's really strong, but it's a situational build in my opinion. Okay, it's not super strong, but it's not super. Uh, weak either it's kind of situational or a build eventually if you're interested in in, uh, in the wilders okay the wilder comp now moving on let's get let, let's talk about lucius a little bit i feel like it's a build eventually into a situational so because lucius you, do, you don't really need lucius it's really good but it doesn't get much power from the mythic plus it just gets like a little bit of a debuff with a little bit of damage with this like the, the ray of light to whatever thing he does so it's either like a build after after you do everything else but it's going to be like the last one although or it's going to be a build eventually or it's going to be a situational build i'm going to put him on a situational build because to be honest you should probably build this person first i forgot a name temasia first before you build lucius because they're the same factions if you need a tank may as well build to measure right this is a build eventually unit in my opinion now for the so you're gonna tell me like okay but what do i use for a light for a light born um a light born tank temasia right but it's a build eventually because the other characters are going to be uh more important for you and by the time you get to the tower you unlock the tower you're going to have a a tank that you can use either Temesia or or Lucius. So I would probably put a little bit of put a little bit of um of wish list here and there. Get get a couple of copies of Temesia and it's going to uh, be usable. She's going to be usable for a surprisingly good amount of time. You're gonna be able to get to like maybe 70, 80 uh, stages. Maybe 70. Let's let's be honest. Like 60, 70 uh, for Temesia on just epic because she runs around and she knocks back in. If you have a good healer such as um uh, like, a, like a good healer in general, depends what you're doing, she's going to be uh, helped a lot and you don't really need her to be super tanky, okay? But it helps, so uh, keep in mind that you want to have one uh, tank for each faction a little bit, at least have it, right? Now, but she's not nowhere near in, in general content uh, needed for anything unless you like the character, You maybe you want to do some weird shit. Now, let's move to a slept on character for new players because they just don't know, right? For example, Kruger. Kruger is a build as soon as possible, in my opinion, because Kruger has one of the best hidden, hidden ability in his kit. The only guy that does something like that is... Uh, Rainier, but I'm not gonna say Rainier build as soon as possible because you, because it's gonna take a long time for you to get Rainier to Mythic Plus, while Kruger is going to have it immediately. And what I'm talking about is a huge damage debuff, uh, damage taken on the boss, so whoever you're attacking. So this is gonna be really really good for uh, Dream bosses. So you want to build them. It's going to go there. Uh, try not to leave him behind, so it, it gets like one shot before he's able to do his ult. As long as he does his ult once, and he, then he dies, it's fine, as long as he did, he did the ult. He's going to skyrocket everybody's damage for the rest of the fight. The buff doesn't go away. So that's pretty big. You should build them as soon as possible. It's going, it's going to be like a crazy addition to your, to, your, um, to your roster. Now, let's go ahead and talk about Flora Bell. Now, a lot of people, people don't like Flora Bell. I'm going to say build after because you don't really need... Flora Bell, even though she has big CC, decent damage, uh, a lot of like, she spawns minions, so she's going to derail a lot of units uh, aggro, they're gonna like do their, their most powerful moves on one of your minions, they can just respawn after 10 seconds, so I think she's a very powerful unit, not the best in the world, not a cracked unit, not a, like insane unit, but she's a really really good unit that you want to build and get eventually to Mythic Plus, whenever you get her to Mythic Plus, you're going to get the ability to uh, actually, let me go here and check because I don't remember exactly all of what she does. So Mythic Plus basically says, uh, grants natural blessing to allied summons. 
upon their entrance to the battlefield, providing them with a permanent shield capable of this shield one, capable of absorbing equal to 200% floor bell attack. This skill can be activated once every 0.5 seconds. This means that she also synergizes with Cecia. Now, Cecia and Flora Bell is a wombo combo, but if you don't have the character to Mythic Plus, you're going to miss on the shield, which is still fine, but uh you want to run them together, especially if you have a Flora Bell Mythic Plus. So first you do Cecia, and then if you, or if you like her, you could, could be a build as soon as possible. Otherwise, if you don't care, uh, she's a really powerful unit for um, the Wilders. So for the tower, she's also going to be really good. And in my opinion, she's also pretty good for PvP because of all the CC and knockdown that she has when she spawns the... Uh, the, the the hammer minion and when she does the ult again when all the minions are already there they're gonna do a mega knockback and it's a room wide and everybody's full down and you get a lot of uh, free damage on them while they're trying to get back up right now uh, speaking of the other characters i'm going to mention uh, shakir which is a build eventually okay so shakir is really good but you need to build him you need to focus him because when he gets to mythic plus he gets the ult uh to like a little better version of his ult which is transforming into like quadrupede mode and it goes like wolf crazy wolf mode super saiyan it's in is unaffected by any cc and it deals a lot of damage it does aoe when he transforms into it and he also has leech he has a lot of uh, attack speed so it's a really powerful unit, but you want him to either like cater him immediately if you like the, the, the molars, or eventually get some copies here and there after you're done get, getting the, others one, the other one up. And now you have your uh, wolf form, your Super Saiyan wolf form, be more efficient, efficient, give you more uh, buffs, give buffs to allies as well, at level 10 weapons, I believe. Uh, so it's really good, but it's a build eventually situation, okay? Now for the, let, let's talk a little bit about the, um, the Graveborns. Igor is a pain in the ass. If you want to build him, if you want to build him for PvP, is going to be a bitch to kill is going to be really painful to kill especially it's going to counter counter all of the vala people that are going to try to sneak kill immediately someone uh, to get the advantage if you put your igor or uh Thor on someone that doesn't die on the on the lines behind vala is going to be constantly countered and you're going to probably going to win let's be honest he doesn't die as long as the tombstones are, are are there so it's going to be a very very powerful unit but it's not a uh, must because you are also doing a lot of pve and igor doesn't deal any damage whatsoever so you want only him for the pvp in my opinion now he also can cheese a little bit of the tower by the way now uh how is she called again how is she called again the 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 frost mage carolina so carolina i don't i think carolina is kind of a whatever there's like a build either a build eventually or a situational build or a nah right because she has like a little bit of cc a little bit of damage she's an okay unit in my opinion she could be used in pvp for freezing targets and uh, freezing one target and apply frost spike to everybody else but you need to be uh on purpose getting her because you like her but that's not what we're talking about so uh comparing her to everybody else everybody or the other roles of a mixed team now she's uh, not as important anymore so i'm gonna give her in the situational build the mythic plus also is gonna give her a little bit more damage but nothing crazy that skyrockets her, 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 her quality quality or value okay uh, moving on now how she's called again i'm, I'm having some uh, some troubles with the names Silvina, because the characters that I don't use uh, much, Silvina is a situational build as well she's she could be good for some cheese situation with her and this guy over here I forgot his name as well. <laughs> this guy over here, over here, which is an we'll put him in the situational build. So he's good, but at, even though he's good, I got him to mythic plus. Imagine that Salazar. Now Salazar is good. He has a huge CC, so it's going to be crazy for PvP if you want to use him or for the tower, especially for the. I like him for the tower. I used Sylvina and Salazar for a long time uh, early on in the tower for the Graveborn to cheese win because you can teleport Sylvina to the end with the speed buff. From the artifact, she gets gets the enemy to below 75 or 50 percent, and then Salazar comes in, stuns them for five seconds. Now Sylvina has the time to kill them, right? And then it's like minus one immediately on the enemy team. So those are fine and all. Uh, Salazar gets 
a little more damage and a little easier to cast like if it gets a free cast on this on the stun uh and then it does like a little more uh, does like an extra whip whatever it's not that big of a deal uh, for this character so it's a situational build either that or a nah but you need to have someone leveled up for the uh, for the tower so i would say this is the order right like sylvina salazar Sal Sal sylvina carolina on this and then igor to cheese and then cecia rowan are gonna be are gonna be your all your crazy ones now for the healing nero is going to be on the situational just for the tower because you don't really use nero as a healer but it, i don't know i don't like how it works i don't like how he, you need to wait for someone to die and then make a ghost of it then slowly dies from it's uh, like by itself just by existing it's kind of weird even even in mythic plus it doesn't really get much uh, value after that now viperian is a build eventually in my opinion because uh viperian has some really really good damage so and he also heals himself so i would say build eventually right for the graveborn we do need as you can see uh, another crazy graveborn in my opinion i also think that besides the molar I think like the Molar and the the Graveborn are some of the coolest unit in, units in the game. So I feel like, especially the Graveborn, right? So I want a new Graveborn that's like really, really good. That would be amazing. Now, speaking of uh, Molars, Satrana and Seth are kind of a, either situational or nah. I would say nah for Riz and nah for Lamont because Riz is, uh, uh, has like shit control it goes around shooting everything but it doesn't really you can't really focus anything it's kind of whatever i don't even have him so whatever and lumont is just a bait tank you feel like it's going to do a lot by uh, knocking back but it just like it does a little bit of a shield it knocks back and then he immediately dies unless you get a mad healing but if you have mad healing any of the tanks is going to do better than lumont okay while satrana the good part about satrana is that she's immortal during the she applies burn and she's immortal during the ult and set has a crazy high attack speed and leech and he's going to be extremely strong and you're going to lose to him a lot from the afk battles from the npcs right so that's really good uh but it's a situational build if you like him you can build him if you need him from the molar but you you see how many molars are must build in my opinion you really don't need them the, these two you really don't need these two these four so you can probably like either build them if you like them their design or something otherwise you don't need to build them in my opinion right uh, so the others are just skins that we talked about these characters are like useless uh this character it's a nah to me uh, I don't care what I don't care what Kafra does. It doesn't deal that much damage. He's a warrior. It doesn't attack too much. He's supposed to shred an, an armor, but <coughs> who's gonna who's gonna put him in the wish list instead of all the other good units that you could wish for? Okay, now what she's called again? I forgot her name as well. As you can see, the character Parisa. Parisa. I feel like Parisa could have some hidden pot hidden potential, but at the same time. Uh, you have other options okay so maybe situational build right or build eventually depending on if you need if you want her if you like how she works she does decent damage she also applies a flower that like deals a mega aoe damage it's fine it's just not like the big deal uh but it's it's by no by no means like a top priority okay now for the for this character for the celestial and hypogean i'm not going to spend too much time on them I'm going to say Rainier must build as soon as possible. This is your focus. You don't care about anybody else until you have Rainier Mythic Plus, okay? And then you, and then you, maybe you can stop and start farming other character. From the other characters, I feel like Bela, uh, Ber 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 Burial is a build eventually, and then you want to do either uh, Dionel or Scarlita on build after for when it comes to when it comes to Hypogean and Celestial after you do Rainier after you do Rainier you can select which one you like the most I would I would I would say that Dionel is probably cooler but I think Scarlita Mythic Plus is stronger than Dionel uh, because Carlita gives a lot of bonuses and then she uh, dro drops down after a while and does a lot of damage, but most of her damage is gated behind the Mythic Plus. Uh, Dionel has uh, less gating, in, but it's, it still needs the, um, the Mythic Plus. So, so is Beryl. But Beryl is uh, more of a PvP unit. That's why it's on build eventually. And that is it. Am I missing anything else? I mean, Goku is a Nah, and this guy is a Nah, and she, uh, we'll talk about her. Those are extra skins. So, this is what I'm gonna do. This is my finished tier list. Hope you like it. If you have anything else to say about it, let me know in the comment. If you think I'm like I'm saying stupid shit, let me know in the comment. Subscribe for more. 
this is my this is my opinion it's not like by no means like an absolute one but that's what i feel like it would be helping uh new players into getting into the right mindset and trying to understand which units are the best to focus on at certain points of the game okay especially for a new player that you need to like if you don't spend money you need to like oh i have x amount of uh, finite resources <laughs> finite resources which character should i focus on this is it okay Thank you for watching and see you next time.